Okay, so the other pattern, uh, this one's just a curious one. It's not really going to be to our advantage to think about as, as a problem solving, but you never know. Um, up here, if I'm to look at uh, the way we construct Pascal's triangle, what you do is, for example, when I found the number 2, I went to the row above and I added the two terms above. Okay, so that's what this pattern is down here. It says you go to the same, you go to the row and you go one above. So that's the row one above and you take the two numbers above it. Okay, so that's how Pascal's triangle is formed. This is sort of like the definition that we're using here. So just to show you sort of how that could relate to some real problem, um, we can answer these three parts of the question without needing to know Pascal's triangle. So let's just say you have seven students. They want to be on the student council, and there's four places to be filled. How many ways can you do it if you must include Danielle? You don't need to tell me the number. You can just tell me 4C2. or Yes? Um, 7C3. 7C3 is very close. Plus one. <laughs> 7C3 is 7C or 1C1. Are there seven students to choose in this instance? Six. Oh, six. Yes, 6C3, because Danielle is not in the choice. You've already, you're going to guarantee she's there. It's only the six remaining students that you get to choose three others. Okay? What if we say don't include Danielle? 6C4. 6C4. So Danielle's still not in the choices, but now I have to pick all four from the remainder. Okay. Um, how many ways, if we had no restrictions at all, how many ways could we pick this? 7C4. Yeah, 7C4. So let's just take a look in the calculator at these values. So 7C3, or sorry, 6C3 is 20, and 6C4 is 15. Well, 7C4 is 35. That's because if you take all the committees that include Danielle and all the committees that exclude Danielle, then that means you've got all of the possible committees, which is 7 choose 4, right? Either she's in it or she's not. So if you add them all up, the total should be the same as if you just let it be any random person in the uh, committee. Okay. But again, that's more of a curiosity. I don't think we'll be uh, relying too heavily on that one. Here, though, is a strategy that uh, can help us out to recognize this. Okay, so a chef is preparing a platter of fruits and vegetables from carrots, cucumbers, mushrooms, etc. How many different platters can he create? Okay. So, one thing we might say is maybe we have a really great chef, and the chef says, you know what, I'm going to work hard for you, I'm going to do all seven items on this platter. Right? It doesn't matter once the food is on the plate, right? you're not going to be like, I ordered bananas and apples, not apples and bananas. So, uh, the order won't matter, it's a combination. Um, you know, maybe he says, no, bananas are too expensive, I'm just going to put uh, the other six choices. Maybe they're not in season right now. Actually, bananas are like the, the only fruit that's always in season, so that doesn't make sense. But, um, and so on, you know, and we keep going. The chef's getting lazier, and he starts to get so lazy that eventually you're just like, oh, you know what, I'm calling in sick, you don't get any food. Okay, so those are all the different possibilities on that platter, right? I mean, we don't like to think about this one, but the reality is if your chef doesn't show up or you come to the banquet and there's no food, um, that's still a possibility. Okay, so if we added all these up and we were to compare this with Pascal's triangle, let's just zoom up here. Okay. This is actually the row we're looking at. 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. These are all the counting numbers for seven items. Okay, so when we add those up, we actually end up with a power of 2. We end up with 128. So that means for the seven items that I had, instead of doing all this addition, it's the same thing as just saying 2 to the power 7, which is 128. So if you're going to take every type of combination from a group, it's going to be a power of 2. That's one of the patterns if you add the row, the entire row of Pascal's triangle. Okay, so similarly, if you have eight light switches that control the lighting in a room, how many different lighting can a technician use to control? Yeah, so we could do this real quick. We know we're choosing all things here, so it would be 2 to the 8, which is 256. Now, there's nothing wrong with if you go, oh, no, oh, my God, I forgot how to do the shortcut. I forgot how to use the Pascal's triangle on this one. 
Um, there's still nothing wrong with this. It's just going to take you longer to do it. That's all. And so on all the way down until this is like when the theater opens and you got to find your seat. And this is like uh, when they want you to go home and they turn the lights off. Okay. Okay. So um, those are some of the patterns. The most important one today is this one here. Okay. So this pattern, uh, I'm going to start off for you just so you see where we're headed. Um, something to the power zero is? Oh, good. We're nice and awake today. Slept through lunch period, I guess. Okay. So it's equal to one. Okay. If I have the first exponent on a plus b, then it's just going to be a plus b. So there's actually a one in front of each of these. After I square it and collect my like terms, I get this. Okay. Anyone want to do the cube? No. Yeah, me neither. Can anybody figure out a smart way to do the cube? One three three one. How did you get one three three one? Uh, Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle. So you just sort of logically assumed that it's path. What if it's not Pascal's triangle? Well, then you look at the one and the two and you <laughs> add them together. Well, you're correct anyway, so I won't, I won't bug you anymore. That's right, it's 1, 3, 3, 1. So if we were to actually uh, write this out, let's take a look at the pattern in the exponents as well. In the exponents, we'd start with a cubed, then it would be a squared, a to the power 1, and here it's a to the power 0. That's why it's not there. b is the reverse. It starts at 0, it goes to 1, then 2, then this would be b cubed. So we could actually write out the answer a lot quicker than foiling it or multiplying everything out. It would be a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. We wouldn't need to go through all the trouble of expanding. We can do it right in one shot. You didn't tell us this sooner. I didn't. You didn't teach us this sooner. I know. It would have been Very useful, nice. I think. Yeah, a lot well, when I went to, have you ever had a math teacher give you something like this and say, here, there's your punishment, a plus b to the 6, go. Okay. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to do that by hand either. That's why I probably never showed you. <laughs> okay, um, so if we were to finish this off in Pascal's triangle, these would be my coefficients. Uh, nope, that wouldn't. These would be my coefficients. Um, how do the exponents work again? 1, 3, 2, 1, 0. For which letter? A. Okay, so this is 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 0, so it doesn't appear. And how does B work again? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so let's finish off the table. Let's see how fast you can do A plus B to the 5 and A plus B to the 6. One, five, ten. Yeah, you're <laughs> see, you couldn't do it that fast without Pascal's triangle. But yes, you're correct. See how quickly you can fill it in on your notes. So this is known as the binomial theorem. This pattern here, if you ever forget, because the formula, i got to be honest with you, the formula is messy and terrible. It may be the worst looking formula you've ever seen. The formula may be so bad that you may just go, oh, I hate this formula. I'm just going to use Pascal's triangle. Um, and that's fine. But uh, let me show you what the formula looks like, just so you get an idea for what I mean. It looks wonderful. It looks wonderful. This is the formula for the binomial theorem. Okay. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a strange looking thing. Um, the only formula that you're going to get on your government exam is this one here, the term formula. So this is basically what you're going to have with you when we write that in June. That's all you get to remember if you forget Pascal's triangle. 
Okay, so we'll talk about this in just a second. I'll let you copy it down.